friends, and welcome to another edition of the Bill Crane Report with my co-host, Dwayne Weiss. We're here together to bring you all kinds of news, opinions, and palaver. General ridiculousness <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so, Dwayne, I'm going to start off by asking you about the marathon bomber. What are we going to do? Uh, what is the jury going to do? And what would you do? Okay, first of all, I <clears throat> do a prediction. This is going to be life. There's too much pressure on the jury now, I think, to yeah. <clears throat> to go for, for the death penalty. You, you don't want to know what I'd do. <laughs> I, uh, I would do life, but I wouldn't do life in some federal prison someplace. I would do life in a tough military brig or someplace, a life of hard labor. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's what they say, uh, that he, uh, <coughs> they mentioned one particular prison that uh, they, he might mm -hmm. find his way to, yeah. The reason I don't, he's Muslim. Yeah. You give him death, he's going to go out as a martyr. Yeah. He's going to be happy. He gets, what, 72 or 42 virgins or how many ever they're supposed to be getting. I don't know. think there's 72 left in the world. I don't think so. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. But anyway, that, that's too easy for him. I know. Because that's what he, what the, these guys what try to achieve yeah. is to achieve this martyrdom. Yeah. yeah. And I, if you're going to do that, I'd, I'd, again, I'd do something that he would think he was going out on the bad side. You know, I've um, kind of flipped and flopped and flipped and flopped about the death penalty. There are days when I say, you know what? I'll throw the switch, mm -hmm. wire them into old Sparky. Old Sparky, yep. Uh, but then there are other times too, especially um, when I read about guys that were wrongly convicted uh, 20 and 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. The DNA proves they were innocent. And I say to myself, what if we had executed those guys? Uh, now, uh, obviously, this guy is a, a different case. There's no doubt that he's guilty. Oh, there's no question. He's about admitted it. his mm -hmm. guilt. Um, but, and, and you know, if if I oppose abortion, the taking of an innocent life, it makes it tough, I think, to uh, support capital punishment. Except, the argument is, an innocent life on this hand a not-so-innocent life on mm, this right. end. You uh, come from more of a moral standpoint. Yeah. I come more of a, a revenge standpoint. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell <coughs> you, punishment. you know, when uh, we had a couple of stories about that pimp in Boston that kidnapped a couple of young girls oh, yeah. yep. and sold them into prostitution and stuff like that, man, uh, uh, you know, uh, boy, I'll tell you, uh, my blood boils over that because you've taken away their innocence, their youth. Yep. Uh, you've made them a drug addict. Uh, it, you've done everything you can to degrade them, short of killing them. And, you know, that's a dreadful thing. That just makes my blood boil when I see that. Well, of course it does. Um, but <coughs> they're there. They're just the scum of the earth. Yeah, absolutely, no question. But you, you're right, and I vote for your prediction. Um, you know, even if the family didn't come out mm -hmm. and uh, articulate their position, and I thought they articulated it very well. Yeah, they did. Um, I think that it was going to be life anyway. Because if it became a hung jury, then it, then it had to be life. Yeah, because yeah. there's somebody that was going to yeah. hold out. Yeah. <clears throat> Because that, that requires a unanimous vote. Right. That's what I thought. Yes, it does. So, um, all right. Um, in a do you have any further comments about uh, Hernandez or? Yeah, I have a couple of them. Okay. I'll, I'd like your prediction. I want your, uh, what's his motive? Why? I got my own theory and you, I want to hear yours. You know, uh, it's like he's back on the block in the city where he was raised. Mm -hmm. And he was going to be king of the block, king of the gang. Uh, it's, he's a, a punk that's acting like a gang Oh, there's leader. no question about that. Yeah. A total out of control. Y but. Yeah. And he's <clears throat> a bad, bad guy, just through oh, and through. Cold and ruthless. Yeah. yeah. And they say now that 
there's more evidence in the Boston killing, the two people that were killed, that that he's going to definitely get convicted of that. I may be way off base, and most of the time yep. I am. But I think the two murder cases are related. I think there's some, well, then some yeah. other people feel that yeah, way, I too. Think, I think that, I forgot the victim's name. Odin Lloyd. Lloyd was new about this, the two in Boston, yep. Yep. and started getting cold feet and said, I'm, I'm going to, I got to, I got to tell somebody. And then Hernandez says, well, you ain't going to tell on me. Boom. Well, you know what? I, I'll be willing to bet you he did tell somebody. And that somebody came right back to Hernandez and sure. said, do you know what your buddy Lloyd is blasting around with his Talking. big mouth? Yep. And Hernandez said, oh, what do you know that? Yep. Bad guy. And, and the previous cases of why the two guys in Boston, one of them spilled his drink. Yeah, another one bumped into him well, and didn't apologize. Into him. You know, this this sets him off, and it's apparently a rage. But again, you like just like you said, nobody's ever said no to these kind of guys. Yeah, that's right. It's not just him. You go through, well, you go through sports, particularly some of yeah. these guys that come up through the through the high school. They were the high school star, then the college star, then they get in the pro, pro ranks. Rules don't apply to them. Nothing. Well, that's right. That's exactly right. Uh, you know, ever since they were a little kid in little league. They were the star. They were the pampered mm -hmm. golden boy, and just bing, 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 bing. You see these guys, they get to college, the football players particularly, and then they'll be in a bar someplace, and they get in a fight. Well, how do you get in a bar when you're a freshman at college? You know, I've often wondered that. How do you get into these strip joints at yeah. 4 o'clock in the morning? Yep. You know, uh, uh, that must be about the most dangerous place in the world, because that's looks what appears to be where they all get into trouble. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I got uh, another thing here that infuriated me, and that was this case down in Bridgewater at the daycare center. Oh my God, that thing too. Um, this lady, Judith Rotaco, just apparently said to the help and to parents, don't worry about it, I'm yep. taking care of it when she was duty bound to report that That's right. up the chain and to the police. Correct. She didn't do either one. Yep. She stonewalled for reasons that you can only, I mean, how she must have gone brain dead or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. When I saw that they arrested her criminally, yeah. at first I said, that's kind of harsh for criminal. Then I started reading about the case where she actually told somebody, the next person up, yep. don't say anything, keep it quiet. Yep. That, she pleaded <clears throat> not guilty to charges of recklessly endangering children in her care by failing to report troubling contact. She was ordered held on $25,000 yeah, bail. That. Now, she has subsequently been fired, which is the only thing you could do with somebody like this. But her uh, husband is a police chief. I saw that. Yeah, uh, at uh, he's a uh, Quinsingerman uh, Community College, mm -hmm. um, and he sort of, when they came to get her, I don't know where she is. I don't know where she is. She turned herself in the next mm -hmm. day. Uh, I guess he has been put on administrative leave, uh, covering up for rightly, her. Rightly so. Yeah, absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely. But you know, this kid denied this Lachlan denied molesting the kids. Mm -hmm. But they went to his house, and he gave them permission to search his room, and they found bins filled with boys' underwear and diapers. And then yeah. he admitted that he was sexually attra a attracted to children and that he can't help it. Well, I think that the, the bottom line here is one uh, mother who said, you would think this would be a safe place. You would think the supervisors would have noticed something. And you know what, Dwayne? I'll be willing to bet you um, that the supervisors did notice something. But in this Somebody light, had to notice something. There, there was the head of the department there was, I think, what, 30 kids yep. with six teachers involved yeah. in that working on day-to-day -day yeah. with them. And then about, what, almost 15, I guess, 
sort student, of like people student, that are worth yeah, closely working aids, with them. Yeah. Well, my God, it's almost you're getting down almost a one-on-one -on -one well, here. Well, they, they they did things, you know, like uh, they noticed he had one little boy in his lap all mm -hmm. the time, so they broke that up, and then they said, uh, when the kids lie down for their naps, you're not allowed in that room. So they did know if, something was if, going on. If you take actions like that, you can't plead, I didn't know. Yeah. But you know, the litigious society mm -hmm. that we have in this country, people are afraid to say something for fear that this Lachlan's uh, family sues them. Absolutely. And uh, th these are people living week to week, and uh, they can't afford a lawyer. So they... Uh, you know, it just turns into a a real that threat of a lawsuit is, mess is very uh, very telling on a lot of different cases today. I mean, oh, yeah. you go back to even I saw this happen. We used to fly back and forth to Minneapolis when there was four Muslims got on, and they refused to sit in their seats. They all asked for seat extension or uh, seat belt extensions. They all got down and they were doing a praying and stuff, and they kept moving around the plane. Well, the, the flight attendant said, hey, uh-uh. Well, people were also going as they were doing something to the plane, and the people were going to tell the uh, flight crew. And so they called the authorities. They kicked them off the plane. The, the plane didn't take off. But they turned around, and not only did they sue, it was Northwest then. Not only they sued Northwest, they were suing everybody in the plane that had said something. Like I said, I said, that was, that was a trial run. It was. For either a trial run that way or a thing, get people if, to think twice about, you know, let's see something, say something. Mm -hmm. Make them think about twice. Maybe they won't say nothing. If they get freedom, they're going to get sued. You wonder where the air marshals were. There evidently weren't any I don't think there board. was any air no. marshals then. No. Uh, that's too bad because um, they are the ones that really should have taken action. And yep. I'm sure they would have. Yeah. I uh, think, well, <laughs> I hate to say this, but. There should not be a flight going in and out of Minneapolis that doesn't have an air marshal. Mm -hmm. And Detroit. Yeah, well, yeah. Minneapolis is a hotbed of, yep. of activity. See, there's six of them now, mm -hmm. again, this in the news today yep. and yesterday. The, the, you know, this is <coughs> just going to uh, escalate. You know, you look at what's going on in cities and countries around the world. So far, you know, except for the Twin Towers and mm -hmm. um, the uh, other... Uh, uh, bombing that uh, the blind cleric attempted there in uh, uh, New York. Crash, yeah. uh, so far, we've really dodged the bullets, but those bullets are coming. Oh yeah, and uh, these people that poo-poo this. Well, now you know. So he gets down and prays, you know, and so he acts strange on a plane. Gee, you can't condemn him for that. No, well, he, get my word. You can't profile him. How about an ounce of prevention? Yeah. It's worth a pound of Did cure. You know, uh, thing with the ASA or the uh, NS or National Security Agency, yeah. you used to keep start putting handcuffs on them. Your uh, your eyes and ears lot. are going to be. We're in a lot of trouble. Yep. Yeah. Because that's where they were getting some of the, in that's how they stopped so many of these. But you know what is bothersome, though, is you, when you see some of the excesses by some of these legal agencies, mm -hmm. where they're just blatantly disregarding the law. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you say to yourself, we, we have a balancing act here. We've got to keep these people under control, even though they're the ones that's that true. are protecting us. You know, we can't have them, well, like, uh, Zanayev's friend down in Florida, uh, the FBI guy, killed yeah. him. He executed him. That was weird. I mean, just flat out executed him, and that's what he was sent down there to do. Sure. You know, and no investigation, no nothing. Well, that's not unusual. I that think that's problem has just gone away. Yeah. Um, well, little boys are made of snips and snails and puppy dog tails. Little girls are made of sugar and spice and everything nice. That's what we've been taught to believe. Always. Um, We're little boys find out things were a lot worse than that. But, but out in Waukesha, Wisconsin, okay. a land you know well. That was on the other side of the state. Two Wisconsin girls. Can't blame me for that one. <laughs> 
Two Wisconsin girls accused of stabbing their classmates oh, to yeah. please the horror character Slender Man yep. were ordered Friday to stand trial as adults for attempted homicide. Both girls face a count of being a party to attempted first degree intentional homicide, which automatically places them in the adult court under Wisconsin law. Both subject, suspects and the victim were 12 right. at the time. <clears throat> and uh, they are going to try them as adults. And prosecutors allege the girls had plotted for months to kill their friend and stabbed her 19 times and then fled. The girls believed they had to kill their friend to protect their families from Slender Man. What in the name of heavens have we become? I don't know. I wouldn't even know where to comment on that thing. That's. I guess we'll just put that one off to one side and maybe like wine, it will get better with age. Here's a good one there's for probably, you. There's probably aspects to that that we don't know. Oh, I'm sure there is. Yeah. I'm sure there is. Where were the parents at this point? Yeah, where the exactly. two girls? That was didn't just amongst themselves that they they had to have signs that something was going on. You would think. Yeah. It, or they were typical parents of today, absentee, absentee. working two jobs, and uh, probably no father in the nope. house. No. Yep, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, or if he's in the house, he plays golf weekends and well. Speaking of that, <clears throat> China has cracked down on corruption oh, targets. Yes. Those who mix golf, golf. and work. <laughs> I laughed when I read that. Uh, the president, Xi Jinping's crackdown on vice and corruption in China has gone after drugs, gambling, prostitution, ill-gotten wealth, overflowing banquet tables. <laughs> Now it has turned to a less obvious target, golf. You know, they, 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 they start out with one target, and then they, they make it almost ridiculous Spreads. by the things that they, that they put in it. Yeah. The, uh, the government has shut down dozens of courses across the country uh, that they were built in violation of a ban intended to protect China's limited supplies of water and arable land. And in the southern province of Guangdong, home to the world's largest golf facility, the 12 course Mission Hills Golf Club, party officials have been forbidden to golf during work hours to prevent unclean behavior <laughs> and clean, disciplinary yeah. or illegal conduct. Uh, I, I, I love a couple of these things here. Uh, they're, they're banning these guys from just doing anything about golf at all. Uh, you can't bet on golf. You can't play with connected any people that are connected to your job. Uh, you can't travel on golf-related junkets or hold positions on the board of golf clubs. Like fine liquor and tobacco, fancy cars and mansions, golf is a public relations tool that businessmen use to hook officials. The newspaper declared, the golf course is gradually changing into a muddy field where they trade money for power. So there's our answer to everything. Yep. If we <clears throat> want to be like the Chinese and clean up our act here, We've used close the bloody golf courses We've used down. golf for that purpose for years. <laughs> I don't know, it, it's <laughs> nothing new. But it's, China's got a, in, is in a unique situation. The more their, their economy expands, the more their, their standard of living comes up, the more it's going to be a threat to the communist government. Exactly. Because all of a sudden you've got a, a middle class that's growing and growing and growing. They're not going to be content no. to, with what the... They're not going to be content to get a pound and a half no. of rice a week and all of that. They're going to look and say, well, look, the limited free enterprise that we have in mm -hmm. Shanghai and in Beijing, these people are becoming affluent. They're rising into the middle class. Right. They have homes. They cars, have cars. Uh, they have nice clothing. Flat they go TVs. on vacations. That's right. Yeah. This, this is 
This the, is what I want. The proletariat's going to see this as a threat to their oh, own existence. Yeah. It is, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, uh, they get a, a, a tiger by the tail mm -hmm. over there. Um, the Parents of the Year Award. Are you ready for this one? I don't think it's going to be me. Two, <laughs> two people in Manchester, New Hampshire, Eric Carter, 21, and Stephanie McCasson, were arrested on charges of child endangerment after allegedly overdosing on heroin oh. while giving their three-year-old son a bath. Oh. Uh, no, I, 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 oh my God. Can you believe this? Yes. Yeah, and you know, I get a kick out of the, all these folks too that the heroin addicts, they're sick. This is a disease. They're, this is awful. They're being held captive by that stuff. Yep. So captive that they endanger their three-year-old son. I don't think it makes any difference. That no, that. no. And, and this this deal about I got to get high, something they want, not something that they are uh, uh, have the husk collar on over. At least in my estimation, anyway. But then I've never been addicted to anything, so I'm lucky that way. But. I don't know. These people uh, were released on $1,000 personal recognizance. Uh, that's sort of a com uh, conflict of terms. Personal recognizance is, oh, we know who you are, so uh, you yep. can go ahead and leave. But to have $1,000, that, that's like having half bail, half personal. Anything can happen in New Hampshire, I guess. Um, Harry Reid the president of the Senate, is probably one of the worst senators ever to grace. And that's quite a statement uh, down in Washington. He I think has, he's right up there at the top. Yeah, he has done nothing <coughs> but stop mm. everything, grind it right to a halt. And in doing so, well, it's the Republicans' fault. I mean, yeah. they just... Uh, they always uh, complain about the lack of bipartisanship. Who is more la who is least bipartisanship than Harry Reid? We're going to touch on that in a couple of minutes. Harry Reid, though, uh, came up with <coughs> a preposterous whopper about an anonymous phone call telling him that Mitt Romney, presidential candidate, hadn't paid any income taxes for over a decade. Now, did Harry Reid check into that? Give the IRS a call? Do anything a normal person would do? No. 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 He went on the floor of the Senate where he is exempt to, uh, uh, for a slander. He can go on the floor of the yep. Senate, you can well, say anything. anything. And, he, and he said that, told that story. Well, a reporter grabbed him. And she said, isn't that the McCarthyism that you so decried? And uh, you have to see the, it says here, you have to see the video of the minority leader's reply after his, uh, uh, he was wearing those huge glasses while one of them's got a uh, clouded right lens. Uh, and, and when she asked that question, he gets this little smirk on his face, and he said, they can call it whatever they want. He didn't win, did he? Mm -hmm. You know, he admits what he did. Of course he does. They don't care. I mean, what a first-class bum. Hypocrisy reigns supreme in some of these it, people. It really it does. Certainly does. It really does. Now, Chris Christie, uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead here, but Chris Christie was up in New Hampshire roasting about. Neither going to pass judgment on that, neither here nor there. We don't know too much about these guys. We'll touch on them in a few minutes. But, but he did something that none of them have been willing to do, and that's talk about entitlements. Mm -hmm. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Okay. No, the two parties do not want to bring that up. No, it's the third well, rail. The, the, it's right, the third rail. But he did, and he brought it up specifically. Mm -hmm. Said there should be a means test for Social Security. We need to raise the age for Social Security. And we, looked, we need to look at reforming some of the stuff about Medicare and Medicaid. You know, the fellow that wrote this article said, uh, it was an editorial, um, you know, it shouldn't be the third rail. This 
in the 2016 uh, election cycle should be on the table and talked about by the candidates. But all the media, and you know which side the media is on. Oh, yeah. All the media has to hear is Medicare, Social Security, right away. There are going to be old people in, dying in the streets. Yep. Their insurance are going to go up. They don't have anything to eat. They're going to be out in the cold, yeah. be freezing to death. Yeah. Nothing, nothing like, well, maybe we should yeah. well, maybe cut, cut the, the uh, entitlement back if somebody's making $200,000 a year. Look what, look what the damn Republicans are doing now. Franklin Delano Roosevelt gave us Social Security, and the Democrats and uh, LBJ gave us Medicare and Medicaid, and the first thing they want to do is crunch it down, you know. But they can't report it fairly. No, they that's can't. a problem. Yeah, it really is. It, it's a big problem, too, I'll tell it's you. It's still political suicide, even though too attractive it is. to talk about it. WBZ Radio, I happened to be listening to the other day. I haven't listened to them in years. And uh, the news, oh, just the news. <laughs> Washington correspondent, um, oh, jeepers, I forgot to write his name down. That's right, Will. Uh, he said, Ted Cruz is going to appear at Liberty University where Jerry Falwell is. Oh, in I charge. knew they had to hook them together. That's real news. Mm -hmm. Jerry Falwell died in 2007. Right. But according to this guy, still in charge. Well, that's the worst thing WBZ does. I suppose we're lucky. Now, I can ask you this. A man from Andover stole nearly 150000 in Social Security benefits sent to his dead father. Graham Griffith was also sentenced Thursday to two years probation and fined $3,000 on top of his jail pleaded guilty to the theft of the public money. They said that after his father died in 2003, he continued to accept his father's Social Security benefits. Um, $150,000. That happens more often than what gets caught. What do you suppose he got for a jail sentence? I would guess probably got three years probation with a ankle bracelet and had to stay home. And, and maybe may restitution. Yeah, well, not, no mention not restitution? of restitution is in this article. Okay, because I was going to say even. He got sentenced to four months in jail. Oh, my God. And two years probation, and he was fined $3,000. You know, now... If he has made total restitution for that 150000 and this is a small article and it wasn't in there, I could understand it. Mm -hmm. But if he spent it on wine, woman, and song, yep. uh, and there's nothing left, 150000 If you put a mask on and went down and held up Linda's Variety, oh my God. and you, you'd, you'd do four years in jail. That's right. You know, and the, the legal system is such that you see some of these cases He'll embezzle somebody embezzles, maybe the government, maybe private, two hundred fifty thousand mm. dollars, and he gets a short term. Yeah, but why not? So if you don't get caught, even if why not? Even if you get a year in a slammer, two hundred fifty thousand, yeah. that's a pretty good salary for sitting there. I, I noticed too, and I had a whole file on these, but it seems like unions, their treasurers, oh. man, a life that was a license to steal. That's historic, boy. <laughs> um, well. You know, school days, school days, golden, yep. golden rule day. And school was a place of learning, a place of fun. Ah, well, in Worcester, a little boy fell off the rails here. Sixteen-year-old boy is under arrest after a loaded handgun and ammunition was found in his school locker. The student's locker at Burncoat High School in Worcester was searched after a teacher overheard a conversation that indicated the student was planning to use the gun to shoot a police officer. He was taken into custody, charged with illegal possession of a firearm and ammunition. What do you do with a kid like that? Well, you never let him back in the public school system, that's no. for sure. Right? Um, but he's going to grow up uneducated. Well, if you need be. There's enough of these. Educate them together. Yeah. Don't let them into the. In one system. of those rooms that's got the bars, bars on, on the, the windows. windows yeah. yeah. 
But really, I mean, he's going to get, he's going to go to a shrink, mm -hmm. um, and then he's going to go to some sort of a halfway home for little boys and told, you know, he has to write on a tablet every day, I will not carry a gun to school anymore, and blah, blah, blah. But does he go home to his parents? Does he have parents? Of course, yeah, that's the whole thing. They yeah, never give you any really, background. Yeah, we really don't know. But it, it, unfortunately, a kid like this is not taken seriously. It's a slap on, oh, Bobby didn't mean that. Until something happens. Yeah, he's a scamp. Yeah, yeah until we have something like Colorado Correct. or Connecticut, where little Bobby goes to school and really shoots a place up. And then whose fault is it? Yeah. Well, it's a damn gun manufacturer's Absolutely. fault. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, how about this one? I love this one. A uh, Seattle airport worker started his shift early and ended up with a nap in the wrong place. The cargo hold of a plane uh, air, taking off to air L.A. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he was banging on, when he realized what happened, he was banging on the, uh, okay. the, the hold there and the, the train had... The plane had to turn around and bring him back, an emergency landing, and he probably got tired loading those bags. But it was so difficult. Yeah, and I thought he'd grab a little nap, you know. And, uh, I, I, it's absolutely unbelievable. You know what? He'll skate on this. Nothing will happen to him. He's just damn lucky he fell asleep in a heated pressurized hole. That's right. Yeah. And if he, had just, when they got if he had just laid there, because uh, he didn't know, but if he had just laid there, he would have been fine. They would have landed, and that yep. would have been it, you know? Would have yeah, surprised well, the hell out of the gang the, that was unloaded. Could have got the other end. He walks out and says, hey, guys, you know, it's like it's nothing yeah. happened. <laughs> Thanks for the ride, guys. Yep. Yeah, oh, boy. Well. It's like bizarre, that. Remember that one, the, the kid that fell out of the hold and oh, in yeah. that, Milton? Yeah. That was bizarre. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, that's hard to believe. Well, guess what? The AAA Foundation for Traffic Safety analyzed 1,700 videos that captured the actions of teen drivers. And it found that distractions were a factor in nearly six of 10 moderate to severe crashes. Not surprising. Um, they examined 6,842 videos from cameras mounted in vehicles showing the driver and simultaneous view out the windshield. Uh, they showed driver distraction was a factor in 58% of the crashes, especially accidents in which vehicles ran off the road or had rear end collisions. The most common form of distraction were talking or otherwise engaging with passengers using a cell phone, including talking, texting, and reviewing messages. And then we get to some other things, too. Uh, looking away at something inside the vehicle, mm -hmm. looking at something outside the vehicle other than the road ahead, um, and then 9% singing or moving to music, 8% grooming, Six percent. Have we seen that in the road? Yeah. The many miles that we used to put on, the, the crazy things oh, we'd see out yeah. there. I watched a girl uh, outside me on one of my uh, commutes to um, Rhode Island putting on her lipstick and doing her yep. hair. And she was going the same speed I was. So I decided to just stay right where I was and see what... Just she was getting all set when she started doing this. I said, I gotta get by her. I've seen him reading books, reading books. books up That's there the other thing. The book. Yep, reading books. Yep. yep, unbelievable. Well, all right, then let's see about what we have next. All right, now this one here, I'm not sure how I, I know how I feel about it. I'm just, I can't believe it. Pentagon to exhume and identify remains at Pearl Harbor. Uh, the USS Oklahoma was sunk, and 429 service members killed. The, um, they buried them all, individual caskets, unmarked, in a mm -hmm. mass grave. Yep. Now, well, it's now 75 years later, um, and... 
some of the families have gone to the de Department of Defense and said, we want all of those coffins exhumed and tested DNA so that we can give them a proper burial. Well, to be, to be buried beside their um, mates, comrades in arms, comrades in arms their friends, yep. it seems to me to be perfectly proper. Me too. I, uh, this uh, is making, I again, I'm not personally involved, so it, I may feel a bit different if it was my father or somebody else, but for sitting here today, I think it's overkill. My wife said, and she has more common sense than I have, look, the amount of money this is going to cost to mm -hmm. disinter these bodies, test for DNA, hold right. the remains oh, yeah. separate, mm -hmm. do the DNA testing, and then see if they can f find a match with all the different relatives that have signed up for this program. Mm -hmm. And then ship the remains back and give them a military burial is absurd. Yeah. They could pay these people and fly them over to Honolulu. Yep. Give them a vacation and have a ceremony at the um, mm -hmm. grave site where all these bodies are held. And it would be a heck of a lot cheaper. That That's what probably should be done because if you look back on um, interned sailors, particularly let's just use sailors, you come across, if you were a diver today and you come across a shipwreck, you're not allowed to go in there. That's right. It's a grave site. It's a grave site. Yep. So it's, it's, it's already a sacred grave site. That's exactly right. Yeah. I, and I think the same thing should apply here. I, for the, look, there's nobody that is more pro-veteran than I am, mm -hmm. and you are. Um, but this just doesn't. This is some sort of a cockamamie feel-good thing. I think so, too. Uh, and what are you going to get back? Some bones? Yeah. Well, Maybe some dog tags? Yeah, at 70 years, I don't even know what's going to put the... Yeah, exactly. What's going to be there anymore? Yeah. I just... I realize that... I think this is hallowed ground already. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Just exactly yep. um, like yeah, they, uh, the U-boats that have been sunk. Yeah. No one's allowed to go in those U-boats. No. That's that is still German property. Yep. And if it's up to them to decide if a U-boat is discovered. You know, but they, they, they don't. They, they consider that to be a burial crypt, and that's the way it should be. Yep. Well, the sailors during World War II that died on the ship, got buried at sea. Buried at sea. Just dropped over yeah. the side. Yeah. What, are you, what are you gonna do about them? I don't know. It just, this just doesn't seem to be appropriate mm -hmm. to me. Uh, but then again. Well, how about this? The uh, people, the police in Brighton have arrested a tree terrorist. I don't, I don't think I know this one. The tree ninja. Joseph Rizzo, 65, of Brighton, was charged with five counts of willful and malicious destruction of property and one count of possession of a dangerous weapon. Police said they are investigating Rizzo in connection with several years of reports of similar incidents. The Brighton tree ninja would either chop down or damage beyond saving young trees that were planted in Brighton. Earlier this month, detectives set up a camera. And guess what they did? They caught a Mr. Rizzo in action. And uh, was he destroying or stealing? Destroying. Oh, okay. That, that's a different. Yeah. That, that's a whole different story again. Yeah. Some tree must have really ticked him off someplace. Something. And it started with input from Brighton residents, continued with the strategic deployment of public safety cameras, and resulted in charges that could otherwise have been very challenging to prove. In March, 
Rizzo was ordered to wear a GPS monitoring device and given a curfew after being charged with vandalizing a tree on Winship Street. On Wednesday, the judge ordered Rizzo to be held in lieu of $7,000 bail on new charges. Walk said that Rizzo will be head for, held for 60 days even if he posts bail because he violated the conditions of his release in the March case. Mm -hmm. What in the name of heavens? He doesn't like trees. I guess not. Maybe he got scared by an oak tree when he was a kid or something. Know. Well, I asked because well, I was with a stealing them or, or destroying them. Years and years ago, there was a, a situation going on, particularly on Route 24, when the state would put in nice little mm -hmm. little shrubs, little plants. Yeah. Go by two days later, they were gone. Just a hole in the ground. People were just going out during the night and, thank you. Dig them up. Yep. This will look good in my yard. Right. Uh, well, fatal beating in Wells in Quincy was unprovoked. Keith Boudreau, oh that guy, and his girlfriend stopped at a bar, yep. had a few pops, left, and evidently got separated. So Keith went back in and uh, was kind of loud and cursed a few times. Where's my girlfriend? And he made the mistake of staring at Paul Fahey who, by the looks of things, is about a 300-pounder. Yeah, oh yeah, you uh, meet him in a dark alley. Yeah, and he's been described as a dangerous person. Yeah. He, and he's an, uh, a member of the infamous Outlaws motorcycle gang. Yeah, that did not surprise me when I yeah. got to that, that part yeah. of the, the article. Yeah. Because that's a mindset yeah. two of these guys had. This guy, uh, the video footage uh, reported out, da 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 uh, one of the men told police that Fahey explained the attack by saying he kept staring at me. Uh, now, the witnesses said he just looked at him. He didn't stare at him. He yeah. just looked at him. This guy got up, one punch, and then when he went down, he kicked him a couple of times in the head, dragged him out, and then said to the bartender, you saw nothing. Hmm. Pretty yeah. nice fellow, huh? Hernandez mindset. Yeah. I think that... Uh, there's a special uh, cage waiting for that lad at Shirley. Oh, yeah. Should be. Uh, and uh, go in, but don't come out. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Uh, I don't know. Well, the teacher of the year has been selected, and it is Amanda Roach, who is a 27-year-old fourth-grade teacher at Haverhill, uh, in the Haverhill school system. She was arraigned Friday at Haverhill District Court on charges of possession with intent to distribute Class B drugs, cocaine, uh, conspiracy to violate drug laws, and possession of a Class C drug, Clunzy Pam. Um, a not guilty plea was entered on Roach's behalf. She was released on a cash bail of $500 with the conditions, she remained drug and alcohol free and submit to random screenings. Her boyfriend, Jim Alizy, 25, who lives with Roach in Haverhill, was arrested and faces the same charges. Uh, this is interesting, though. Amanda gets to walk on 500 bail. Uh, but Jimbo uh, has to uh, come up with three thousand dollars bail. He must have, must have influenced her. Yeah, he must have. Since one. Well, uh, uh, Jimbo may have a record too. I suspect Jimbo's know. not the first run-in yeah. with the law. Um, this is interesting. Uh, Superintendent James F. Scully said of Roach, "She was a very well-respected and well-liked teacher. She had taught at the school." for about four or five years and was nominated for the Teacher of the Year Award last year. The school plans to notify all parents and Roach has been placed on paid leave. Her employment status at the school will not be decided until her case is resolved. I, that is just bizarre. Uh, the, yeah, uh, you can't make stuff like this I up. I know it. 
give me a break. It's, it's, it, it's, we got this going on every time from the top on down. What if she plea bargains this down I to possession? Know. Yeah. Now, and not with the uh, uh, intent to distribute. And pre, uh, plea bargains it down to a misdemeanor. Does that mean she gets to go back and work at the school? Well, maybe she'll yeah. make teacher of the year. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Another one to rave about. Jody Arias, Arias has been found guilty of shooting Travis Alexander out in Arizona. This uh, has been going on for a couple of years off and on, this whole story. But she first of all said that uh, bad people broke in and uh, shot uh, Alexander and uh, uh, th this was, uh, she had all kinds of crazy stories. Masked intruders broke in and she cowered in fear and all of that. Well, guess what? Yep. She uh, now admits that she did kill him, but it was self-defense. Of course. Now, here's the self-defense. She shot him and stabbed him 30 times. Well, you don't know. Did she get him the first time or not? Make sure that's her self defense. So that's what. That's her self defense. Self defense was yep. make sure he's dead. Yep. So cut him up, carve him up 30 times. I didn't understand that, but now I do. Alfred Hitchcock <sighs> would have been, He would have had so much material to use today. He wouldn't, <laughs> he wouldn't even have to sit down and write anything. Do you know, Scott Brown had this tendency to say the wrong thing at the wrong time occasionally. Uh, but this latest comment about Hillary Clinton is unbelievable. Uh, but he said, Hillary Clinton will make a better president than Barack Obama. Well then, he sort of modified it and said, Let's start with this, because the guy that was the whole interview on him jumped all over him. He said, well, let's start with this. I think Hillary Clinton would have made and will make a better president than Barack Obama, absolutely. I think Mitt Romney would have made an incredibly better president than both of them combined. That being said, yes, I do like Hillary Clinton personally. Can you explain that to me? I don't know why you, a man like that, why he walks into that kind of stuff. Unbelievable. Just shut up. Yeah. Just, yeah. And, and you see some of these guys, that their mouth opens up and something just rolls out of it. Yeah. I what mean, are you thinking of? What on earth was he thinking of? Mm -hmm. Let's give aid and comfort to the enemy. Yep. You know? Yeah. I mean, let's, I mean, uh, let's set up all the rest of the Republicans, you know, as uh, being subservient to Queen Hillary. I, I, I don't know. And, uh, as a Republican, he can't, not going to get away with it here. No, he's not. Oh, he's dead meat now. Oh, yeah. They, uh, they, they watch these, the, uh, the right every day, 24 hours a day, just waiting for somebody to say something. Yeah. Now, he's a commentator on Fox yep, News. Yeah, he is. I've, I've seen him in the morning. I wonder what happens when somebody asks him about that. I don't know. I, 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 listen, I'm telling you, if he tries to answer it, it'll just make it worse. Yep. Um, boy, oh boy, oh boy. Um, here's another interesting story. Ten former Atlantic, Atlanta public school educators were convicted oh. in a widespread conspiracy to inflate student scores on standardized tests were sentenced to jail time. They were warned. They were warned, and the judge warned them to plea bargain this thing out, and oh, they no. ignored it. Oh, no. Nope, we're not going to do that. So, um, and he, he threatened them with jail. And he said, I've got a prepared sentence in mind. I don't think you want to go my way. Either it, but it's either my way or a negotiated plea. Yep. Well, they said, nope, we're not going to do that. Well, um, 
the former Atlanta school superintendent, Beverly Hall, who has since passed away, is alleged to have pressured teachers to inflate the scores to meet federal benchmarks for extra funding. Yep. Now, what does that do for the kids? Well, you I, know, they graduate, yep, and I, then they go take an SAT test, and they get seven on it. Yep. Because they haven't received an education. But wait a minute, look at this. He made the honor roll. Look what he did on the standardized tests. No, it, no, it did. The, the testing, or the, what they've learned, how about the ethics of it? Yeah, oh, well, that's exactly right, yeah. The ethics are just blown here, out of water here's here. The, here. Here's the deal, get by by cheating. That, that's right. What Bingo! You, that's what you're telling the kids. Yeah, um, the, uh, a state investigation found that as far back as 2005. Well, it's been going on a long time. Educators from yep. the 50,000 student Atlanta school system fed answers to students are erased yeah. and changed, changed answers them. on tests. That's Evidence of cheating was found in 44 schools. Mm -hmm. This wasn't just an accident. This didn't just not. happen, a uh, little microcosm. This was the school superintendent, education superintendent, yep. that did that. There's and a, why? I'm to sure get there, extra there, money. There's a lot more involved just of the 11 oh, here. Yeah. Oh, there is. They think yep. there's 180 involved. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, no murder charge for a Colorado woman accused of cutting into an expectant mom and stealing. Oh, that's bizarre. The baby. I, I saw that in the paper. I just couldn't believe it. She is not going to be charged with murder, even though the act of what she did killed the baby. Mm -hmm. The baby never took a breath. It was eight months old. That's a viable baby. It is. And she was charged with attempted murder, assault, and unlawful termination of a pregnancy. But because of the abortion laws, she cannot be charged yep. with murder. Unbelievable. I hope and pray that uh, somehow or other the prison sentence for, for this is about 68 years. Because that's what she deserves. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. I see. She's, she's a dangerous society. You, you got to be a total whack job to do this in the first place. Yep. Yep. I mean, there's no, it's, it's just beyond being a you know, human nature because that's just not something humans do. It's awful. 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 Yep. You know, it's getting to the point in this country where the safest place for a fetus to be is his mother's womb, but that's changing rapidly. Oh, yeah. Uh, teen charged with painting SWAT stickers. 17-year-old male, but we didn't name him, was charged in Cambridge Juvenile Court with vandalizing and defacing property and damage to uh, property damage to intimidate after he allegedly tagged words and symbols including SWAT stickers at Lewis Hall at Tufts University. Uh, he's going to be tried Got as a juvenile. Mm -hmm. Now do you suppose he's going to be given a power washer and a scrub brush and sent out there to That's clean it up? That's what he should up? have. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this is, he realized what the SWAT sticker stood for. If he did, did, he's a bad boy. If he didn't, he's a stupid boy. It's probably the latter. You know, because today you can't, that, that, you can't assume that a kid today knows anything about history. I know it. And, you know, I, I know, as a kid we used to have put, we used to play army all the time. Yeah. Some, we, some guys were the, the Americans and some were the Germans. Yeah. And we had our little things. We drew swastikas all over the German side, you know. But we didn't look at it as, as no. that. It was just an identification Kids of the Germans. Playing, yeah. yeah. This is either hatred or someone just behaving very badly. Yeah. But in either case, it's wrong. 
Uh, this is another one. Student sorry for racist chanting. Uh, at a fraternity member caught on video leading a racist chant said Wednesday, he's deeply sorry for his role in the incident and upset and embarrassed that he failed to stop it. Was this the one they were on the bus? Yeah, this is the one that uh, he, this was the anti-black um, yeah. chanting at Sigma Alpha Epsilon. Yeah. Um, That's nothing new, you know. No, I know that. That chant yeah. it goes back 40 yeah. or 50 years. Yeah. And a lot of the, the, who the people are making the big fuss about today did it yeah. when they belonged oh, to that yes. same, same yes. fraternity. Absolutely. Um, but he said, I did not want to apologize to the press of the whole country until I first came to apologize to those most directly impacted. Um, he's in college. Mm -hmm. Isn't that where you get enlightened? I don't think so anymore today. Oh. You know, here's another one that drove me nuts. Dear deaths linked to food from people. Oh my God, that, that was the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever saw. Yeah, yeah, deer cannot digest hay. So what do people put out for them in the winter? Hay. Well, deer must be different in New England. Because where I came from, the sportsmen in the wintertime, when it got real bad, would buy whole trailer loads of hay well, and put it out for the deer. They, uh, they had found evidence of corn, hay, and what appeared to be pelleted grain in the deer. That's another uh, The farmers in the Midwest leave usually the first four to eight rows, don't harvest it. Right. So oh, the that, deer can get it. That's right. Well, that's different than commercially available stuff. Oh, I guess, I it guess. probably, you know, uh, it's not, probably but, because it's on the cob. But it, but it said, Necrop necropsies on eight deer indicated they had died from complications by winter feeding. And that's why they tell you up in Maine, don't feed the deer. Yeah, but. I don't know. I guess the deer over here are stupid or something. Well, I don't know, but I, you know, I've I've known this for years, but and, and the guys up there don't, you know, they don't put hay out. Ah, oh, well, anyway, and I, the, the deer have an inability to digest it, and it binds them up. I don't think eating uh, hay for a day or two is any big deal, but over time, they can't properly digest that oh, stuff. I don't know. Um, and in Maine, the Gee, the House and the Senate up in Maine have been busy. The legislature. Oh, they have been. Yeah, they're at odds over a tanning ban for teenagers. And also the fair pint of beer. So. No, I agree with that fair pint of beer. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, the, the pints that they've been serving around here are 14 ounce, you know. Yeah, they've kind Instead of, of 16 them. ounce. Um, and then we had a 23-year-old man stabbed at a party in Springfield. Uh, when they went back to where the party was, they found another man stabbed, and then they found a third man stabbed. It's quite a so party. So my solution to that is ban parties. That's right. By gosh, by golly. Well, folks, apparently we've talked our way through another dandy episode of our Bill Crane Report. And it is time for us to sign off. So we uh, will certainly be preparing another dandy show for a fortnight or so. And I know that uh, you folks will be anxiously awaiting it. So good night, good luck, and we'll see you in two weeks. Take care, all. Take care.